Hey everybody, and welcome to today's video where we're going to model a custom chair with upholstery. And the thing here is that we're going to try to make the upholstery without actually using Marvel's designer. So let's begin. Uh, since this is the since this is going to be a custom chair, that means we won't have to adhere to any uh, dimensions, so we we can have some creative um, liberty. All right, so we're going to start off with a box. I'm going to take this thing and make it so it has a length of about, let's try it with 20 centimeters, width by 40 centimeters, and height of about oh, two centimeters. It should give us something like this, and I think this can be okay. We might actually, we're going to leave it like this. Now, usually when I'm creating something like this, if I have the creative uh, liberty to choose wherever I want to go with this design, I would probably base it on something that already exists. In this case, I would like to make one of those chairs that has different levels, so a base for the seat and two other ones to lean on. So for this, I'm actually going to go ahead at a edit poly and add in one extra connection in the middle like this. So hit one time connect, select all of these guys and hit another connect. All right, so once we have this, I'm going to select my vertices and select the corner vertices on all sides and pull them in. So just basically scale them in. The way I do this is because I want to utilize the turbo smooth to give me the extra details that I want. So turbo smooth on. Put in, uh, put in two iterations and click on the smoothing group option. Now, as soon as you do this, you're gonna notice that we have this uh, uh, sharp edge on the corners, but we don't actually wanna have a sharp edge. We just wanna have a continuous flow for this whole thing. So I'm gonna go back to my edit poly, select uh, this edge, ring it, hold on control and press polygon. This is going to select all of those polygons. Now you've probably seen me, uh, you've already seen me do this in a previous video, but I'm just going to uh, show it really quickly. I'm going to go over in the customize uh, me menu from here, choose uh, the menu to add in the shortcuts. And from here, just uh, find smooth selection. This thing uh, here. Select it and hotkey it to any key that you like. For me, it's the K key. So what this does is basically it allows me to apply a custom smoothing group to whatever I have so, uh, selected here. So if I press in show end result, you can see the end result with the turbo smooth. And now if I press the K, you're gonna notice that this whole thing just got rounded which is a very nice way of controlling um, the form of this thing. All right, awesome. Once we have this, I want to add in one edit poly on top of the turbo smooth. The reason for adding in this is that I want, don't want to have a sharp edge on the corners. So I'm going to go ahead, select all of these borders like so. There we go. Double click, this is going to select all of them. And now I want to add in a slight chamfer. So something very small, like 0.1 centimeter should be fine. All right, awesome. Now add in another turbo smooth, again with the smoothing groups. And since we added in uh, that uh, crease on the edges, it's being treated as a separate group and it's giving us that extra bit of detail. All right, awesome. So we can use this as the base of the, for the seat. Now, the only thing I want to have here before I do anything else is I want to have a slight dip or a slight uh, bend to this. And the easiest way to do this is simply by adding in a bend modifier on this. So put in a bend modifier, change the angle axis. There we go. And instead of, let's say 12, let's go minus 45 and we get something like this awesome this is a good place for a start of our chair now that we already have this i want to continue on and add in an uh, edit poly on top of our bend now from here 
I want to add in the upholstery for this thing. Now, the, since I don't want to go to Marvel's Designer and create the upholstery in there, as I've had uh, multiple people ask me if I can make a tutorial about how to do this thing without actually going to Marvel's Designer, but stay within Max, we're going to try and do everything inside 3ds Max. So for this, I'm going to hit my polygon, hit my by angle and set it to 50, something like low as 15. So by just clicking once, you get, you're going to select everything that's within that 15 degrees um, selection threshold. All right, like this. Now, I want to hit detach here, but make sure you detach it as a clone because we really don't want to have a hole in there. So detach it as a clone, click OK. And now select our top piece over here. Now, I want to have this thing as a shell because I really do want to have some uh, thickness to it. Give it a shell of, let's say, one, like so. And I'm going to isolate this so it's easier to see. Right? So select Alt Q. There we go, like this. Edit a turbo smooth. Select the bottom again. Need an angle threshold of, again, 15. And this time attach this, but not as a clone, but actually as just a base. Click OK. All right, awesome. So we have a bottom here and we have a top. On top of this, now I can add in a turbo smooth to give me some extra uh, polygons on top of here. And I'm going to hit Edit Poly. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is going to make it easier for me in the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, bottom border here, hold on Control and click on Vertex. That is going to select all of the vertices at the bottom here. Now, the reason for doing this is now for the next step, when I go in and add in a cloth modifier, and if I click over on group here, it's going to allow me to select individual vertices. But since I already have these three dots over here, it means that uh, the edit poly has a selection of vertices. I can click here on get stack selection, and it's going to take that same selection from beneath. So instead uh, of going and manually selecting all of these, I just copy the selection from the edit poly. Now I'm going to make this into a group like so. And those uh, vertices, I'm going to node to this bottom part over here that we just detached. There we go. So with this, I can just get out of the cloth, go into object properties, take the uh, cloth and make it something uh, you can pretty much choose anything uh, It's going to give you a different result. So for me, I can go with uh, let's let's try with a silk and give it some pressure. Let's go with uh, 30 pressure and click OK. So by clicking simulate local, this thing should inflate like this. If I end isolate and change the color, so it's easier to see. Let's go with something like very simple gray. Put this thing with a darker color. There you go. Now we have a very, very simplistic um, cover for our chair. The thing here is that you can call this uh, done and continue on modeling the rest of the chair. But instead of this, I want to have a more uh, detailed look for this cushion. So the way to do this is I'm actually going to go back in a few steps. So first thing, I'm going to delete the cloth. There you go. Now I'm going to isolate both of these pieces again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and scale them outwards. So let's try and scale it for like 10% or so. Something like, yeah, there we go, 110. Now, a very important thing is whenever you're doing simulations and you scale stuff, it's a really good uh, idea to always go in and reset the X form. Otherwise, it can give you some problems when you start simulating stuff. All right, so again, doing the same thing, uh, select the, the border, select the vert vertex here, add in the cloth modifier from here, get stack selection and make it into a group and node it to the bottom. So, so far, nothing has changed. If I go in back here, add in the cloth, 
make it silk. Again, we're trying to do the same exact result. Hit simulate local. We get the same exact result. But now, since our base is bigger than our um, wooden base here, or the cushion is bigger than the wooden base, I can do here is I can slightly, while uh, simulate local is still running, I can select the base, which is noted to the vertices on the edge, and scale it inwards, but very, very carefully, because uh, Max really loves crashing when, when it's doing the simulation. So when you're basically scaling it inwards like this, you're going to notice that now this thing is starting to get some folds. So I'm going to put it upwards a bit. Now pull it downwards just very slightly until it touches down, like so. All right. So we have a different result now. We get some uh, crumpling on the edges. But for this, I actually want to get a bit more pressure on this thing. So I can even try to change this to cotton and see if that thing is going to change anything. Increase this to 50. Press simulate local. Oh, well, nope. Let's try it and change with a different preset. Instead of cotton, let's try burlap and try 100. or not. All right, let's try another one then. Let's go and try, uh, well, either satin or, well, pretty much let's try with satin. Let's see if this thing is gonna work. And there we go. We get a very, very rough looking or balloon looking uh, end result. So for this, I'm actually gonna go in and decrease the pressure Instead of having 30, let's try 15. Click OK and simulate local. All right, so now I have the volume, but the folds of this thing are kind of hard to control. Now, the one thing that we have in uh, Marvel's Designer is the ability to basically select whatever piece we want to uh, move and basically pinch and move it to the um, side that we want to have that pinch or squeeze to. Here we can do something very similar. The way to do it would be uh, by basically cheating a bit. Now here is how we cheat for, uh, to, in order to get that same result. First of all I'm going to turn off simulate local and I'm going to isolate just the, the top here. Now basically when I'm here I'm going to go ahead hold on control right click and create one circle here, like so, and move it above over there. All right, and I'm going to do two more, one here and one here. Now, while we have this thing done, we're going to use, we're going to go in uh, cloth, press one to select uh, a couple of these vertices, select a few of them that are near the uh, circle and make a group out of these and then node them to this circle. So basically we are doing something uh, something similar to controllers for rigging. If you've ever done something like that, you're going to notice that this is more or less the same exact uh, idea where you basically take um, a few vertices or a few polygons and you basically node them to something. These controllers here or the circles are going to be controlled by the simulation. So now when the simulation starts, if I select these circles and I move them inwards, the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the simulation is going to take that into account. If I move this thing backwards, it's going to give me that result. Just again, be very, very careful and don't uh, jerk these guys very f uh, fast or sudden because it can really, really break your uh, simulation and make your entire chair go haywire. So very slight moves until the simulation stops. There we go. 
And once you're happy with the result of how that thing looks like, what you can do is just simply go in and stop the simulation from running. For now, I just want to get it to a point where it doesn't have this dip here. And isolate. And slightly move it inwards. I sell. All right. So for now, I'm going to turn off the simulate local. And all right, for this, I'm happy how this thing looks for now. On your on your side, you probably might want to have uh, a few more uh, minutes for uh, and make sure everything is nice and smooth. So now to continue on, I want to have I want to reuse what I have uh, created here, so I don't have to start from the beginning. So I'm simply going to select the bottom here, move it by shift dragging outwards and here i'm going to rotate this at an angle of let's say 65 maybe make sure it's close to this awesome but now since i don't want to have this and this thing to be the same size as uh, the bottom one what i can do is I can put a, a FFD modifier in this, or what I can do here is on top of this bend, I can go in and add in an extra bend modifier. So this additional bend modifier, if I go and give it, let's say, 15 degrees angle, and then bend it on the local, uh, rotate it on the local for, let's say, 90. This is going to make sure that the, the top here is thicker than the bottom. The bottom is going to be thinner. So we have that nice look to this thing. So if I move it again in the local, I can get that uh, result to be different. Again, since this is going to be a custom chair, we don't have to really follow any rules. We can have pretty much any uh, type of chair that we might want with this. To make this even more interesting, we're going to add in an additional bend. And let's see if we give it... Yeah, the other way around. There we go. Minus 50. Awesome. So we have a thicker piece uh, on the top, thinner on the bottom. And honestly, I might actually just go ahead and manually scale this thing inwards just a tiny bit like so. All right, this is not bad. This is looking okay. Awesome. So let's do, go ahead and redo the same thing with it here. So again, uh, select the angle 15. I'm gonna do this thing a bit uh, faster now. So detach it as a clone give it a, a shell the shell thickness is fine edit poly make sure everything is selected on the back detach not as a clone add in a turbo smooth to get in the extra details edit poly select the vertex and put in a cloth modifier and get the stack selection make group and node it to the back side all right go in give this thing a satin preset let's try 50 simulate local it's going to give me a nice backrest this is not going to be uh, like the one at the bottom it's, gonna, it's not going to have those folds but since it's for backrest it's actually okay. Again, give it a different color for now. All right, this works. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the bot uh, for the top one. So again, recopy this thing one more time. Give 
now we gotta make this a lot smaller all right there we go like this put it down now control the bend with this like so all right awesome all right so now quickly again redo the same approach for this thing i don't want to skip anything so i'll leave the recording going on as i'm doing this but if you learn how to do this already and you don't want to watch this make sure or just skip ahead and join me later on once we have this thing done if not stay with me and watch me do this thing one more time all right so shell again isolate edit poly detach put in a turbo smooth on top of this hold on control select all these guys cloth modifier get stack selection make group and node there we go make this a cloth satin again 50 simulate local there you go we get that type of a look and also once we uh, get a bit higher here we can control how uh, strong the pull is by controlling the gravity if I put in like minus uh, 580 it's actually not gonna make too much of a difference but still there we go all right so we have this part here covered as well all right so with this we have the base and we have the cushion now what we want to do is we want to add in some support for the legs and i want to have something for uh armrest now adding in the back here or the legs is not that hard it's actually really easy i want to hold down control and right click and choose a line now this line I'm going to use as a base for my chair. Get, make it like this. There we go. All right. So with this, I'm going to go and enable it uh, in renderer and viewport. Make sure it's uh, rectangular and not radial. There we go. And this is going to give me this uh, type of a look. Now, I want to control the thickness here let's try with something like five yeah five is gonna work and the width here should be let's let's try to oh two centimeters too much one centimeter yeah, i think this is gonna work awesome now what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna convert this to an edible poly and every time you convert a spline to an edible poly you're going to get this uh, line at the end at one of the ends it's going to be either at the end here or the start so select that uh, edge control backspace that is going to get rid of it now i'm going to use a turbo smooth uh, to control how this thing looks like with the smoothing groups and once we do this you're going to notice that we have a bit of a problematic outcome because this thing doesn't really conform well to our chair now we're going to use the same uh, type of modeling that we uh, previously showed on the edges so for this i want to click on uh, one of my ver uh, vertex selection and click on show cage this is going to give me the basic cage of this model so i'm going to select the ones here and the one on the bottom and i'm going to scale them outwards like so now, what this thing is going, well, actually, I'm not going to select these guys. I'm just going to select the ones on the bottom. This is going to give me a bigger base to work on, like so. Now, what I want to do here is I want to make sure that this 
here this crease over here follows this line what that means is I'm gonna have to go ahead I'm gonna isolate this for now uh, turn off show end result and select these guys over the, over here and by pressing the K button this thing is going to get smoothed um, with between those two um, polygons and since we have uh, the option of smoothing groups on the turbo smooth this thing is going to follow that curve now we want to have the bottom one um, here following that curve as well so select those three press the K and this thing is going to give us this kind of a look here now we have that same problem over here say uh, because this thing is moving all across so we want to have this thing this guy this guy and this guy by pressing the K fix that thing this guy this guy and this guy press K fix that issue so with this now we have a interesting looking base for our model now I actually want to have uh, want to have this uh, sharp edge so with these guys selected I'm going to actually go ahead and select these guys and select the, the bottom one so now if I press the K it's going to round it up at the back which is going to give me a more interesting end result here and let's just see how this thing looks yeah looks interesting and since this is a very very basic geometry if I press the show cage you're gonna notice that if I select just these guys and move them across from each other that is going to control how big this entire thing is gonna be so very easy to to control all right so let's just fix this uh, remaining issue here on the back so with this guy press K and the inner part again press K that is going to give them individual smoothing groups same with these guys and we no longer have that issue on the back let's try let's see just how this thing is going to look there we go so with this we have a base for our chair if i put in three iterations it's going to give me a nicer look and if i don't want to have sharp edges like so I can just add in an extra turbo smooth and that is going to make everything a bit tad bit smoother here which is not bad all right so I have the the bottom for this chair now the only thing that's left I want to have something for the arm uh, rests so for this let's go in and use this time around let's go ahead and use a plane for the plane like so segments and put it to the side there we go all right and for this I actually don't want to make this any complicated uh, anything that's going to be complicated so just a very few extrusions with the plane like so there we go and in the front viewport one's here another one over here and with this i actually want to add in a symmetry modifier to get the other side move it to about there nope yeah this is gonna work just like that so again, now move these guys to the side till they meet. Awesome. So adding a shell modifier in this to get the thickness that we need. Put in a turbo smooth again with the uh, smoothing groups. Mm, this this can work. All right. So on top of the shell, I'm going to add in uh, one. Uh, connect here just so it can better control this line like so 
make sure we move this in so we can get a better look. There we go. Move this thing a slight, ever slightly like so. And with the symmetry on, we just need to address the smoothing groups. Boom. So deselect that one and that one. Press K. And we have all of these guys following that line. The smoothing group I should put in two iterations, like so. There we go. Awesome. Now what we can further do here is select the show cage to make this thing a bit more interesting. Move these guys inwards. Move these guys inwards as well. And we get instant feedback as to how this thing is going to look like. And depending on how we want it to look, we can just move these guys wherever we want them. Like so. Awesome. And on top of this symmetry, I'm going to put in a uh, turbo smooth to make sure it rounds up the, those edges so it's not sharp edges. Awesome. And move it slightly up. So this way it's, this thing is between the bottom here and the seat. Now we can choose to uh, get the seat to sit on top of this thing or on top of this, whatever works best. All right now, since this video has gone on uh, for quite a bit of time now, I'm actually going to save this thing like this. And in the next video, we're going to continue on with adding in extra details and making uh, a few more modifications and prepping it for um, making it a low poly model. So, I hope you guys had fun and you learned something new. If you do have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video. Also, if you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video where we will continue our modeling.